I just have found in, in relationships, particularly with men, that I like to have lots of men friends because as I, and my best lovers and my best love life have come from men that I uh, was, were deeply uh, great friends and then it caught fire. For many women, being successful in business is far easier than being successful in love. So what traits can we bring from our business life into our love life? And what should we just leave at work? You know, Rini, one of the things that oftentimes women do is when they're not successful in love, they throw themselves into business because that's really where we get our satisfaction and our fulfillment. And unfortunately, what we need to really do is look at how are we falling in love? Because when we actually bring our love life to our business, if we get both right, we get both. So the fulfillment piece, I think, is what hurts a lot of people is that women actually look for fulfillment in their business. And so when they go out on a date, if the date isn't fulfilling, they're actually going to go back to business and say, this is where I can be successful. This is where I can get what I want. And this is where they end up alone. So we really need to understand what's important to us. And just like in business, who's our ideal person that we would really fit with, our ideal client, our ideal customer, and find that person in our romantic life so we can actually make a good match for ourselves. Nobody knows us better than ourselves, but most people don't take the time to actually understand who they are, and then they don't know who's a good fit. So they just accept who walks through the door instead of using their lens like they would in business Who's a good person for me? Who can I really serve? Who can I really partner with? Because that makes a better match. So it sounds like making it really crystal clear, something that you would do in the workplace, right? Making your goals very crystal clear. Is that what I'm hearing? I, I love that idea that we generally move towards where we find fulfillment. I think we all are like that. You know, we feel happier, we feel healthier, we have energy. I just have found in, in relationships, particularly with men, that I like to have lots of men friends because as I, and my best lovers and my best love life have come from men that I uh, was, were deeply uh, great friends and then it caught fire. And that friendship that catches fire is, it just has such a deep root in it. And in, I love my work and in the things that I love about my work are I can set goals and then I can measure and achieve goals. And I think the same thing in our love life that if you know I, we have a goal in um in my marriage right now this next year that we have eight weeks alone over the course of the year and it's a goal i'm growing towards and goals are for growing not just getting but growing and so it's been fun to set goals and then grow into them not just in my business but in in love oh my god you have marital goals I do. that is very cool <laughs> i have I've, I've never heard of anyone doing something like that <laughs> Spend eight weeks alone. Yeah. So over the course of a year. All right. All no, that's, but, although we could, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of alone time. <laughs> yeah, but we do well alone. So. <laughs> that's wonderful. Is it one of, one of the things you talked about? You were saying was um what not to bring. Um, and I think with the dating conversation, if you spend all this time talking business, 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 and you're not taking the time to get to know the person and remembering what is it that you like, and you talk about knowing, knowing clearly what you want. Well, bringing that into conversation, not uh, constantly, this is what happened at work, where you're not looking for the solution, but you're continuously talking about work, work, work. It's gonna push them away. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, because I think a lot of times, what happens is when you meet someone, you know, at least in recent times, is very quickly, hey, what's your name? What do you do, <laughs> right? I completely agree. I mean, I think one of the things that makes us very successful in our professional lives is that we are analytical and we're logical and we're ambitious and we're driven and we tend to take that into our love lives. And granted, we need the vision. We need to know what we're interested in. We need to know what we're not interested in. What are those lists of non-negotiables? But Then we have to follow our heart. We have to just live our life and stop analyzing it sometimes when it comes to the relationships. It's not about, is this the perfect ideal mate for me? It's not about getting to the top and getting the best guy or the best husband. It's completely about following your heart and how it feels. As long as they're not hitting that non-negotiable list, go for it. So what I'm hearing is, what can we do to bring some of our business savvy into the love life? And one thing is, is that we can really be present we can be authentic to ourselves. 
and we can follow our heart by just being present and, and listening to that inner voice. That's amazing advice.